This is a harmonic drive from the company Citadrive. It has a very compact design with a reduction ratio of 51. And this is a 3D printed version that I designed with a reduction ratio of 31. And as you can see, it is much bigger, mainly because of the tooth size and the large bearing that I am using. In this video, I will test the backlash and torque efficiency of both and compare their performance. First, let's take a look at the Citadrive design. The 3D model can be downloaded from their website. It has an interesting design in which the flex spline is fixed in place. Normally, it's the output of the drive, but in this case, it drives an output gear. Another interesting aspect is that they're using built-in cross roller bearings, which helps in making the package very compact. Now let's look at my design. I tried to come up with a similar concept in which the flex spline is fixed and drives the output gear. On my previous designs, the flex spline was the output of the drive. So it will be interesting to see the performance difference. By the way, if you want to design your own harmonic drive, check out the app one have on my website. You can select the number of teeth to get the reduction ratio you want and then download the gear profiles in DXF format. This is how I designed the harmonic drive on this video and previous videos. You can see more details about those here. The flex spline is sandwiched between the motor plate and the bearing holder. Keeping in mind that this will be 3D printed, I had to make the tooth size much bigger than the Cita drive. I'm using a module of 0.8. And the thickness is also 0.8 millimeters, which is much thicker than the Cita drive, which is only 0.1. I added these cutouts to reduce stiffness. Without them, the flex spline will break immediately. Another new thing about this design is the wave generator. On my previous video, I discussed how the wave generator affects backlash and torque efficiency. Basically, the more deflection you apply to the flex spline, backlash gets better, but torque efficiency decreases. So previously, I tested different sizes to find something I was happy with. However, now I made an adjustable wave generator so I can tune the amount of deflection on the flex spline. This wave generator is a three-piece design. The sides ride on three millimeters dowel pins to keep everything aligned. And we can use washers as shims to add more deflection. After some testing, I landed on five washers on each side. Let's now see the assembly process of the Cito drive. We start by installing the shaft coupler. It has a very tight tolerance, so I used a vise to press it on the motor shaft. And I 3D printed a spacer to ensure that it sits at the right height. Then I tighten the set screws and install the motor plate. Finally, align and install the main body, which contains the flex spline. This is the version that I have. The price is $160, but it was sent to me for free by Citadrive. It can handle five Newton meters of constant torque and peak torque of 15 Newton meters. The advertised backlash is very low at 20 arc seconds. So we will see if I get a similar result on my test. This is how my design goes together. Everything is printed in PLA, except for the flex spline, which is PET-G.
Let's start testing. To measure backlash, I will be using a method based on some standards I found online. We rigidly hold the input shaft of the harmonic drive so it cannot rotate. A torque is then applied alternately in the clockwise and counterclockwise directions at the output. To apply torque, I will be using the sandbag and bracket. The resulting angular deflection of the output shaft is measured with a lever arm and a digital indicator. The linear displacement is converted into output shaft rotation in degrees. Two torque levels are applied in each direction, giving us multiple points per flank. For each flank, the torque angle data is fit with a straight line. The backlash is taken as the difference between the two lines at zero torque. In other words, the angular clearance needed to transfer contact from one flank of the teeth to the other. This method also allows to account for elastic twist under load. This is the result for this CIDA drive. Each data point is the average of three measurements. As mentioned, the backlash is the difference of the lines at zero torque. In this case, it results in 2.4 arc minutes, which I think is very good. Now, on the 3D printed version, we can see there is much more deflection. At first, I thought this meant the backlash is not very good. However, after running the script, I found that it's actually not that bad. I think the large deflections are caused by the low stiffness of the drive. We can see that on this clip. There's no visible play between the output gear and the flex spline. However, the flex spline can easily be twisted. Let me know if you think this testing method is not correct or if it can be improved. To find the torque efficiency, I first measured the torque of the motor that I will be using. This is a pancake style NEMA 17 stepper motor. To drive it, I will be using this closed loop stepper driver from MakerBase. To measure torque, I will simply press against a scale with a 150 millimeters long lever. I measured approximately 0.13 Newton meters. On the CIDA drive, I saw max readings slightly above four kilograms. This means an efficiency of 87%, which I think is very good for a harmonic drive. The 3D printed version has a much lower efficiency as expected. I measured about 30%, which is similar to the results I got on my previous videos with the other designs. I also tried a different wave generator with lower deflection. The torque efficiency was better as you can see. However, I didn't pursue this version as I didn't like the backlash results. Finally, I measured the max torque the 3D printed harmonic drive can handle. This is basically the torque at which something breaks. The torque at which the drive fail was 9.6 Newton meters. As expected, the flex blind failed. I also wanted to test the harmonic drives on my Scara robot. I installed the 3D printed version on joint one. For joint two, I used the design I showed on my previous video. However, there wasn't enough torque to properly test. The motion was very jerky. Perhaps with bigger stepper motors, I would be able to evaluate this 3D printed harmonic drives. On the other hand, the CIDA drive harmonic drive worked well. The repeatability was really good and the motion smooth. Also very silent. I made some drawings with the robot and I think they came out great. Let me know if I should make a video about this Scara robot and the software I made to process G-Code to be able to create some of these drawings. I can also release the files if you're interested in building your own. This is a summary of the results. The files for this 3D printed harmonic drive are available on my website, along with the bill of materials and assembly instructions. Finally, Feel free to join the Discord server if there's anything you want to discuss about this video.